The right TMCC pattern is identified by the Posture Restoration Institute as a chain of muscles, including this temporalis muscle and this masseter muscle, but also the neck muscles, the right SCM and the right upper trap. Those are going to be the main players uh, that hold our body over to the right side and create a twist in the neck for us to stay straight. From the back, you would see the upper trap is the primary player. It's not really going to be the middle and lower trap. In fact, we need more middle and lower trap activity, particularly on the right side. It's the upper trap that is starting to pull the head and neck forward because you can see it attaches on the base of the skull. As it contracts, it pulls the head and neck forward. And then because it also uh, attaches, this upper trap also attaches onto the, the front, uh, it has this effect of keeping us to the right, rotating our head to the left as we stay very tight through our right upper chest area, along with the right SCM. It also has a huge influence on the right shoulder and the right scapula function because of this omohyoid muscle. As the head and neck rotate forward on one side, so it's going to come as you're over to the right, the right shoulder drops and your head and neck have to side bend left and rotate left to stay straight it twists, every, it, your, everything in the neck starts to twist a little bit. And because of the hyoid muscle, the hyoid bone and the muscles all on the front of the neck, but this particular, this omohyoid muscle, which goes from the hyoid bone to the right shoulder, uh, your scapula, your right shoulder function will rest upon appropriate neck function. So for your right arm to work normally, you have to have, be able to shut off this right side neck activity which means simply you have to be able to get to your left side. So the right side turns off, the left side turns on, and now you have a right shoulder that is free to move. But if you're stuck over on your right and you're trying to use your right shoulder a lot, and a lot of humans do, that's where right shoulders really start to become problematic. And here it is just kind of side by side photo. You see me, my head and my neck I'm over on my right. My right shoulder is dropped, my left shoulder is higher. My head and neck are side bent to the left. Uh, I don't know which way it would be for your orientation, but you can see in the picture. So we got upper right, it's temporalis muscle. This is a jaw muscle. Remember, that's a jaw elevator. That's why a lot of people with TMJ on the right, or it could be on either side, but people with TMJ issues, uh, it's because of this right TMCC pattern. It's really more the neck than the jaw itself, but it's this, this pattern of overactivity from being stuck on your right side that's causing a lot of people's jaw problems. And here it is with the other two patterns. Here, so we got the, on the bottom, the left AIC is bringing the pelvis to the right. The pelvis shifts to the right. The right BC pattern holds you over on the right, and I'm matching your orientation right now. And then the right TMC pattern, right TMCC, turns your head back to the left so you can stay straight. Now, what's the biggest problem with the right TMCC pattern? Well, again, it's part of, you know, one stage of the walking cycle. It's called being on your right leg. Not a problem as long as you can get to your left leg and switch it. The problem is when we get stuck over on the right for a variety of reasons, why, what, for whatever reason we get stuck over on the right, once you are stuck over on the right, the longer you're there and the more activity your right neck starts to take on. And it's going to take on breathing because once you're over on the right, you're going to lose that smaller left diaphragm. And now you have to keep breathing to make up for the lost left diaphragm. And you're going to use your neck to do it. Over time, the more stationary you get, and let's face it, lots of people are stationary and they're sitting and staring at computer screens. At that point, the head and neck start to come forward more and more. And now you may end up with overactivity of the left SCM as well. And now you might start to get a straight neck. If you start to lose your curve in your neck, that is a problem. Any doctor can tell you, any, any chiropractor, any, anyone who knows anything about necks, or the human body, you do not want to see a straight neck. Straight necks are problematic. You're going to have, uh, a, you can get a lot of weird symptoms, neurological symptoms, sensory, anything. A lot of weird autonomic nervous system symptoms, dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system, uh, vagus nerve issues come from straight necks. But it's not only that. Remember, once the neck is straight, it's influencing the rest of you also. So you might What's going to, you're, what you're going to find with a straight neck is also a hyperextended lower back and, by, and rib flare. So people are going to be extended through their, lower, through their lower back. Quite often, very rounded shoulders. 
but also a pelvis that's going to come forward on one and quite often both sides. So it's just bilateral extension, which is physiologic state of fight or flight. And that's just a lot of tension that starts to build up. If the straight neck has occurred simply because you've become a neck breather because you sit too much or you just breathe through your mouth and for some reason you were just breathing through your mouth even though you didn't have to. Once you start neck breathing, that head and neck come forward. But the problem is as you continue to neck breathe, your upper traps and your SCM and your scalenes, so the front of your neck and the back of your neck, are pulling your rib cage straight up to try to breathe. That is dysfunctional breathing. And as you do that, it, again, it pulls your head and neck forward. So now you get real tight through the front of your neck and your upper chest. But what that also does, it extends you. So once again, you get thrust into this extension pattern every time you take a breath in. I would say 60% of people who come to see me for, for pain or discomfort uh, are breathing in that type of manner. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong. And in that situation, if they're just neck breathing and they've lost some curve in their neck, and that's the reason they're just extended and they're neck breathing. PRI, postural restoration, handles that really, really easily with normal PRI programs. Uh, so there's not one primary, there's not one exercise to fix this. It's going to be a program. So I can't just give, I can't just show a technique and say, hey, this is going to fix, fix your forward head posture. That's not how it's going to work. But theoretically, it's not hard to, it's not hard to fix, if you will. You know the pelvis is going to be forward and the ribcage up. So you gotta get the pelvis back and rib cage down, expand, expand your rib cage diaphragmatically, and now the head and neck can go back into a normal position. But that's gonna require a stable pelvis, abdominals, thoracic flexion, internal and external rotation of the femurs, shoes that allow the feet to go through heel, arch, big toe. Otherwise, you'll just go back up into, into extension again. Uh, it requires good vision. It requires not doing this all day long. So it's not so simple, but that's what posture restoration is designed specifically for, is to treat uh, forward heads, at least on one side, which is called the right TMCC pattern. So another problem with a straight neck is it can collapse the airway. So when a head and neck come forward, quite often the jaw will end up too far back. And once the jaw ends up too far back, you start to collapse the airway. And the only way you can start to breathe and open up your airway, airway again is by extending your body underneath it or kind of trying to bring your head and neck forward more to try to, again, open up that airway. But the problem is it just puts you more into a forward head posture with extension. So when you lose a curve in your neck because of right TMCC pattern over time now becomes a bilateral TMCC pattern, you may end up with a jaw that has now shifted too far back and the airway is now uh, a little bit compressed. And maybe now you'll start to have breathing issues, uh, sleep apnea. A lot of things can start to happen once the, the airway is, is um, compromised. And there's literally books written about this subject. So disordered breathing is a big deal physiologically, because again, it puts you in a state of hyperarousal uh, and inappropriate breathing and uh, a vagus, that becomes a vagus issue, vagus nerve issue. Probably nothing wrong with the vagus nerve. You're just living in a state of fight or flight because you can't breathe properly. Also, you see all of those nerves. Uh, you got a lot of nerves going through that area. If that head and neck come forward and it lifts the chest, the, that collarbone area, all those nerves that are running through that area, that there can be compression on those nerves. So you may end up with something like thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, there's a lot of nerves, a lot of circuitry that goes through that area. And once head and necks come forward, there can be compression on those nerves. So whenever you have cranial dysfunction, uh, which a forward head and neck will lead to. That means something's going to go wrong with your vision, your jaw, your teeth, your tongue, your diaphragms. You're not going to be in a, you're not going to be in a good rest and digest parasympathetic state. And as that cranium, let's just say your teeth are fine, your jaws, your, your jaw, your teeth, your eyes are fine, but your diaphragms, if you're in a forward head posture, you're going to neck breathe. When you neck breathe, you're not going to be diaphragmatically breathing. So that's dysfunction. So you're going to have diaphragmatic dysfunction because you're not going to be using them because you're going to be neck breathing. Your rest and digest, your parasympathetic, parasympathetic activity will decrease. And as that decreases, what will activate and increase is your fight or flight sympathetic trunk muscles, your back extensors, your hip flexors, and the front of your neck. And as they stay active because you're in this position of extension, it inhibits, it, 
disallows your use of hamstrings, glutes, pelvic floor, lower legs, and feet. You're not going to be using those powerful hip muscles correctly uh, to stabilize you and move you forward. You're, you're not going to have those muscles to stabilize your pelvis, which is the platform off of which you diaphragmatically breathe. You're not going to have a pelvis that can go from side to side, right foot to left foot. You're going to stay in an extended state. So getting your self out of a forward head posture, which is what posture restoration is really all about, through a PRI program. Not There is no one exercise that's going to do it. It's going to be a program. Uh, will improve your ability to diaphragmatically breathe, which will decrease your cranial dysfunction. When I say cranium, it really means cranial nerves. Your cranium will become more functional. Your cranial nerves will become more functional, which will then decrease the fight or flight muscles. And as the, as the fight or flight musculature decreases its activity, you can then promote or reactivate the hamstrings, the glutes, the pelvic floor, the legs, feet, which are needed. So it becomes a vicious cycle of tension, forward head posture, neck breathing, and postural instability. And it sometimes takes quite a bit to get people out of that.